What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast. I am, of course, your host who does the most, Ethan Smith. Hope you all are having a phenomenal Wednesday, March 23rd. I'm at work. Got to love the background. Got a nice little plant behind me. But, of course, as always here on the Locked On Pirates podcast, thank you guys for making me your first listen of the day every single day. You can listen to this podcast wherever you you find your podcast on Odyssey, Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and, of course, YouTube. Make sure you go hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button, and make sure you turn on notifications to know when our latest episodes drop. On today's episode, Brian Reynolds and the Pittsburgh Pirates are headed towards arbitration. We're going to talk a little bit about that and the implications behind it. MLB also released their top 30 prospects for the 2022 season for the Pittsburgh Pirates, and Ben Gamble has an awesome moment yesterday after hitting a home run in spring training and with all that said you already know when the intro hits it's time to get real and let's have a fun episode you are locked on pirates your daily pittsburgh pirates podcast part of the locked on podcast network your team every day And thank you guys so much for tuning back in to the Locked On Pirates podcast. I am, of course, your host who does the most, Ethan Smith. Hope you all are having a phenomenal Wednesday again, as I am as well. Hopefully everything is good for everybody. The Pirates, of course, playing a spring training game right now at the time of recording. But some bigger news to talk about off the field right now is that the Pittsburgh Pirates and Brian Reynolds have chose arbitration. Now, there's a big kind of fuss about this right now. Um, But if you look across MLB, there's a ton of players who have gotten sent to arbitration due to the team and the player not agreeing on a salary figure. Lucas Giolito, the Chicago White Sox, Wilson Contreras, the Chicago Cubs, among some of those names. So it's not out of the norm to see a star player like a Brian Reynolds get sent to arbitration here where the sides were about $700,000 apart. I think uh, Reynolds wanted 4.9. The Pirates wanted 4.25. And arbitration is always interesting. Of course, you saw Chris Stratton, who ended up getting a deal to avoid arbitration. That kind of changed things for his trajectory heading into 2022. But a lot of Pirates fans, including myself, have called for Brian Reynolds to get an extension. Now, some notes on this. Brian Reynolds does have team control until 2025. By that point, he will be 30 years old. So maybe that plays a little bit of a factor here, but also I think Brian Reynolds is a good enough player to the point where it's not going to really matter when he hits 30. I don't think he's going to hit that 30-year-old wall and all of a sudden just be a terrible player. So there's two sides to this. A lot of people want him extended, and apparently, according to multiple reports, the Pittsburgh Pirates did not even approach Reynolds on a contract extension as of yet, and did at the end of the 2020 season, which was also his worst MLB season of his career or minor league career. Um, But it seems like the talks there with an extension have not been talked about that much, and that's a little concerning. Brian Reynolds, of course, Easily the best player on this ball club right now after last year. A gold glove finalist, MLB all-star, best hitter on the roster probably right now. And a lot of you Pirates fans who listen to this podcast say, let's extend Reynolds. Let's extend Key Brian Hayes. Let's extend O'Neal Cruz. At the end of the day, the Pirates are going to operate under the idea of team control. And that's what I brought up yesterday when talking about the O'Neill Cruz decision is I would not be shocked in the slightest to not see him come up for the first couple months to manipulate service time. We've seen that before. We'll probably see it again. And the main thing I think that a lot of people have issue with here is it just doesn't look good. It, it doesn't look good that you're not really even trying to extend your best player, although he does still have three more years of team control. It would be nice to have him get a – even three or four year extension to his age 33 or 34 season, because then he can be a part of what you're trying to do in the future here. And that's where uh, like the biggest question in all of this for Brian Reynolds is Brian Reynolds, a part of the future or not. It's a very interesting question. If you ask some people, because some people would say, yeah, trade him while he has team control, trade him at his peak, 
get a ton of prospects and build around that. Some people want us to extend him. Some people want uh, Key Brian Hayes extended. Some people want O'Neill Cruz extended. But this is just not how the Pirates operate. They're going to operate under team control. And I also, I'm on both sides of the coin here. I'd love to see Brian Reynolds get extended. I think he's done more than enough to prove that he deserves an extension. But at the end of the day, the team control was there, and that would open up more money elsewhere to make the team a winner. And then you extend them when you have a good set foundation in place. Nothing wrong with that, right? But also, you don't want to get to a point where the relationship between Ryan Reynolds and the front office is so tarnished that you don't even have a chance to re-sign them. And then you're forced to trade them. And we all know by now that when you get forced to trade a player in Major League Baseball, his value goes way down. And you don't want that to happen for Brian Reynolds. You really don't. And again, I mean, you look at what Reynolds did last year, and he came out of nowhere. And I already knew Brian Reynolds had this in him. He's a great hitter, great fielder. A lot of people were very scared about him playing the center field position last year, and he proved them all otherwise. I think he's going to do phenomenal again this year. And if he does phenomenal again this year, the only thing that I keep saying about extending him now over extending him later, he is going to be cheaper now than he is later. Because if he continues to rep, it, like let's just say he replicates or nearly replicates the season he had in 2021, he's going to go up in value. Now that means he'll go up in trade value as well, but he's going to go up in value for the amount of money that he's going to want. Same thing if he does it in 2023. And I will still be on the train of do not trade Brian Reynolds. I don't think we should. I don't think the Pirates should do that because he is the best player on the roster. He is a centerpiece that you can build around. But the Pirates need to also view it that way if they want to extend him. And as of right now, it does not sound like they were talking about an extension at all. So do they view Brian Reynolds as the guy? They should, but do they? That's the biggest question that everybody here has to ask about Brian Reynolds. And I mean, you look at some of the stuff that he said on the um, in an interview with a couple people uh, this morning, and I'll steal from uh, Jason Mackey here on his Twitter feed, where he was talking to Brian Reynolds, and I have to scroll a little bit, um, and he said on whether he preferred an extension over a one-year deal. They didn't say anything about an extension, so it wasn't really on our minds. I would obviously have liked to reach an agreement so we didn't have to do this now. It's part of the game, I guess. So it's very obvious that Reynolds is a little upset here, and he has the right to be. I mean, the guy wants to get paid. He should get paid. Um, And we'll see what the arbitration committee decides here. I mean, the Pirates are about 700000 less than what Reynolds wanted. So we'll see what happens. Um, It'll be very interesting to see how this moves forward for Pittsburgh. And Brian Reynolds, again, As long as he's in Pittsburgh, I'm going to absolutely love him and root for him. If they trade him, better make sure you get a haul back for him. And right now, the prospects in the system look absolutely phenomenal. I don't think anybody would really doubt that. But MLB has released their new top 30 prospect list. But before we get into that and break that down, I want to let you guys know about the wonderful people at Built Bar. Built Bar, of course, is the best tasting protein bar on the planet. It is the time of year that... Some people have pretty much given up on their New Year's resolutions, but not this year. Sticking to your resolution to eat right, thanks to Built Bar. It almost feels like it's not really a resolution because you'll actually enjoy eating them. Have you tried the Puffs? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, marshmallowy, and they're not just a protein bar, they're a treat. And they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite. With some incredible flavors, you have cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, and banana cream pie. These are going to be your new favorite. All Built Bars, of course, are 100% covered in real chocolate. They are low-calorie, high-protein, and you can replace your candy bars with these. They are better. A typical candy bar can be anywhere from two to 300 calories. Most Built Bars, by the way, on their macros chart contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month, white chocolate cookies and cream. They are all delicious, and new flavors are coming out all the time. And if they think a flavor might be good, they'll make it. It'll be delicious, and it'll be good for you. Go to BuiltBar.com right now. 
Use the promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off of your order when you invest in the best protein bars on planet Earth. So now, some more fun talk uh, about the Pittsburgh Pirates today. Uh, Major League Baseball, MLB.com, released their top 30 prospects list for the Pittsburgh Pirates, and we have a new number one this year. Uh, Lots of moving parts here, and there's a lot to get into. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Nick Gonzalez, of course, number one overall prospect. He has been phenomenal in the minor leagues. His bat has been absolutely great. Of course, if we remember, he was the seventh overall pick in the 2019. It was either 2019 or 2020 first round uh, MLB draft. I can't remember which year, but I just remember scouts saying, whenever they drafted uh, Nick Gonzalez that the Pirates got the best pure hitter in that class. And it looks like Nick Gonzalez is living up to that notion. He is the number one prospect right now. He has an ETA of 2022, according to MLB.com. I don't think he'll get up this year. He may get up in September call-ups, depending on how they do it. But as usually for pitchers, which we'll get into a little bit more on that. Um, But also... I mean, I agree. It's, it's hard to disagree here with this top five of prospects that they have right now. Of course, number two is last year's first overall pick, Henry Davis, the catcher out of Louisville. 6'2", 210. Henry Davis last year got some time in Greensboro, but did sadly get injured. Of course, Henry Davis still far behind right now. He just got drafted last year. I wouldn't say far behind. I think that's bad wordage. I think far away would be better words. Uh, ETA of 2024 is where they have Henry Davis right now. I would expect a high dose of him in uh, Greensboro this year with the grasshoppers. And I think watching Henry Davis grow into a phenomenal catcher like I think he will will be absolutely fun. And then everybody's favorite prospect, O'Neill Cruz, comes in at number three. The 23-year-old, six foot seven, 220-pound shortstop has looked phenomenal in spring training. If you want to go check out yesterday's episode, I talked about why the decision on having him either in AAA or MLB is going to be a tough one either way that they they cut it. And I think that's going to be a very interesting talking point over the season is just if they bring up O'Neill Cruz immediately and he doesn't play well, do you send him back down or do you just send him down immediately, let him get some confidence in AAA and beat up the AAA pitchers and then come up later in the year and manipulate the service time? That's really where you're going to be looking at with O'Neill Cruz. I think he's going to do well either way, but we'll just have to wait and see. Then one of my favorite prospects at number four is Quinn Priester, the right-handed pitcher. I cannot wait. I hope and pray that he stays in Greensboro for a little bit with Henry Davis because any time that Quinn Priester and Henry Davis are playing on the same day, I'm going to make sure that I watch that game. It's going to be awesome to see those two work together. I think Henry Davis is going to make a lot of the pitchers in this system better, and there's a lot of good pitchers in this system now, and it's very fun to look at a lot of these guys and see that the Pirates have a good wealth of pitching right now in this farm system. Um, and speaking of wealth in the farm system, of course, at number five, rounding out the top five is Roenzi Contreras. Of course, Roenzi, it's going to be interesting to see where he starts the year. I think more than likely he'll start in AAA with the amount of options the Pirates are going to have at their disposal. Um, I mean, we've already heard uh, every freaking day pretty much on the broadcast that Jose Quintana is pretty much going to be guaranteed a spot. Mitch Keller will probably be guaranteed a spot. JT Brubaker. So then that leaves two spots open, which will probably be filled by either Dylan Peters, Zach Thompson, or Bryce Wilson. So I think Rowenzi will probably come along later in the year, like May or June. That's what I would highly expect to see. Um, But we'll see how that works out for him. And as we move down, again, one of my other favorite prospects who had a great play in yesterday's game, Leover Piguero, shortstop, four, six foot, 200 pounds. You already know I love Leover Piguero. Him and Nick Gonzalez are best friends. They really enjoy being around each other. I think Leover is going to be playing a lot in AAA this year. I think that's going to be mainly where he's going to be. And I think that would be very fun for him to see as well. Uh, just to kind of get some action down there in Indianapolis, perfect his craft there, and then next year come up and play. One guy who took a major jump, though, uh, for this prospect pool was Andy Rodriguez. He comes in at number eight. He's listed as a catcher slash an outfielder. Andy Rodriguez, man, he is going to be about on the same trajectory as Henry Davis in terms of development. So you could be looking at your starting and backup catcher of the future in like two years 
with Henry Davis and Andy Rodriguez. But again, it just really depends on what the Pirates want to do with Andy Rodriguez because he is listed as an outfielder. He is listed as a um, catcher as well. So we've seen him play catcher a good a bit, but we'll see what happens with him. Then, of course, another draft pick from last year, actually two at eight and nine, and Anthony Chan- or Anthony Solomedo and Bubba Chandler. Of course, Anthony Solomedo, the weird arm throwing motion, pitching motion, probably not going to see that by the time you get to see him. He is in rookie ball right now alongside with Bubba Chandler, who is also going to be at rookie ball. Bubba Chandler is going to be the interesting one because they drafted him and he's a very good pitcher and a very good hitter. So we'll see what they decide to do. And even here on MLB Prospects, he's listed as a right-hand pitcher and a shortstop. So we'll see there. Again, one of my other favorites, Matthew Frazier, is listed here. He is a number 10 rounding out the top 10, also with an ETA of 2022. And I think Frazier has a good chance to also come up this year and maybe make an impact. But there are a lot of outfielders on the 40-man roster right now uh, including Anthony Alford and Greg Allen, who are probably going to be the starters out there in right field while Gamble and Reynolds handle left and center. So Frazier getting up again could be kind of tough, but we'll see what turns out to it. And then we'll kind of run through some more stuff here. Michael Burrows comes in at number 11. Jared Jones, another pitcher, comes in at 12. Both of those guys still about a two or three years away, I would say. Swaggerty, who many people expect to be called up this year, was just optioned to AAA Indianapolis yesterday. Go check out the episode yesterday where I talk about that. Um, Also, we did find out that uh, he was having issues with his shoulder and a setback with his shoulder throwing, so that's interesting. Carmen Majinski, another right-handed pitcher in the system at number 14. I love Carmen Majinski. You guys hear me talk about him all the time. I think we'll fully expect him next year. Don't think he will come up this year. I think 2023 will be his year. Lonnie White Jr., yet another draft pick from last draft, will be in rookie ball. We'll see how he progresses as a guy who almost went to Penn State to go play football but decided to play baseball instead with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Miguel Yahure, one of the forgotten guys in this system, I think, who came over in the Yankees trade. Should have seen some action in Pittsburgh this year. I think he might start in AAA. Of course, he had the injury last year that kind of really affected him um, near the end of the year, and he had some back tightness. Jiwon Bay, another interesting one, but I think he's kind of buried in a very deep uh, middle infield depth chart with guys like Cole Tucker looking like they're going to be well. Kevin Newman still on the roster. O'Neal Cruz, Rodolfo Castro, Hoy Park also hit a home run today, so that was big for him. So we'll see where Jiwon Bay fits in that mold, but I think he could definitely start in uh, double or triple A. Michael Escato, another guy that we're going to see that's going to be pretty far away, I think about two years from now, another middle infielder, another shortstop. Kyle Nicholas, who was picked up in the Jacob Stallings trade, comes in at 19. I think he's going to be a very good player for us as well. He's still about a year or two away, though. So a lot of these guys near the bottom uh, are definitely a lot closer than some of the guys at the top because you have Jerry Triolo, who I really enjoy as a third baseman, but obviously you have Key Brian Hayes kind of stopping him from coming up here pretty soon. But he's only 24 years old, so still time for him, but also an ETA of 2023, so about a year or two away. Diego Castillo. I think he's going to be playing baseball in Pittsburgh at some point this year. I think he has a chance to start in AAA. Diego Castillo, yet another uh, player from the New York Yankees farm system. I think he's going to be very fun. Hudson Head drops a 22. I think he had a drop this year, but he's still well far away. Still in uh, single-A baseball. Still uh, 2024 ETA. He was the prize of the Joe Musgrove trade. So we'll see how he develops over the next couple of years. Kanan Smith and Jigba comes in at 23. Probably going to see Kanan Smith and Jigba at some point this year at the major league level. Probably going to see him in AAA for a good minute as well. Mason Martin, probably same thing. You're probably going to see him in AAA for a hot minute. Maybe he comes up later in the year. Uh, Tucapito Marcano, same deal. So you're seeing a lot of these guys that we're going to be seeing this year are kind of the lower end prospects, but they're still prospects and they're still young guys that I think are going to help this team get back into contention. Uh, Rodolfo Nolasco. Rookie ball, pickup from last year, 2024, 
um, ETA. Now, Rodolfo Castro, who we got to see play some MLB action last year, thinks same thing. He'll probably be in AAA for a little bit. He'll probably move up to the MLB level if injuries happen. Same thing with Cal Mitchell. Thank God the Rule 5 draft got canceled because I really thought Cal Mitchell was going to be gone, and it was very, very scary to think about that. And then, of course, Jack Sawinski, the final outfielder, along with Tanaj Thomas, round out number 29 and 30. So if you want to go check out that list, uh, for yourself, it is at MLB.com slash prospects or dot slash prospects slash pirates. And again, my main takeaways from this, you're going to be getting a lot of prospects coming up this year. I don't know who they're going to be. You can get a good idea. Um, and then you have the next wave coming next year. So 2022, you're going to have kind of the O'Neill Cruz, Rowanzi Contreras, Cal Mitchell, Kanan Smith, and Jigba wave. And then next year, I think you're going to get the Nick Gonzalez, Leover Peguero, Quinn Priester, Karma Majinski wave. And then you got to think after that, you're going to be getting the Bubba Chandler, Anthony Solomito, Henry Davis, Andy Rodriguez wave. So that's what I'm starting to see right now is the Pirates have a lot of different waves of this farm system that are looking very, very solid. And of course, if you also want to have kind of a little breakdown of this farm system, I have an episode with Lindsey Crosby from about a month ago where we broke down the entire system as well and had a fun chat about that. And before we wrap up uh, this segment as well, I cannot wait to watch the rest of spring training and see what these guys do and see how things happen. Um, Cause there's still a lot of prospects that can be seen here. Short spring training makes it a little more difficult, but enjoy watching them while you can before they go back to the minors. And before we talk about the awesome moment, that Ben Gamble had yesterday, I'm going to tell you guys about uh, Athletic Greens. Uh, Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking Athletic Greens because, you know, I didn't have time. I want better gut health, more energy, optimized immune system. You know, hated taking pills and vitamins. I can't stand it. And I wanted a supplement that actually tasted good. Wanted to see what all the hype was about. There's some hype uh, behind Athletic Greens. And it's um, been about two weeks, and I love it. It doesn't taste like it's super healthy, but, you know, it has a kind of mild tropical taste that I actually look forward to each morning. So what is this stuff that I'm telling you about? Well, with one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all of the things that you need. Of course, why do I personally consume it? Because again, digestion, energy, I work a lot, so I need that energy that I need. My family and friends have not gotten to on it to it yet because they're still waiting for it to come in the mail, but they've already started about it. And you know, it's really fun as well. And some health facts about it. It's lifestyle from, uh, friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. It contains less than one gram of sugar. So no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything while still tasting good. It also supports better sleep quality, and recovery supports mental clarity and alertness. It's the one thing with the best things. Athletic Greens uses the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing it costs you less than three dollars a day you're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit it's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself and you're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance athletic greens has over seven thousand five-star reviews recommended by professional athletes trusted by leading health experts such as tim ferris and mark michael gervais and right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash MLB network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash MLB network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And Athletic Greens is a climate neutral certified company. That means that they are a fully carbon neutral business. Carbon, hey man, Athletic Greens, it's very fun. It's very good. But before we wrap up today's episode, I always like to highlight things 
that happened around the Pittsburgh Pirates that were very positive, very fun to talk about. And if any of you watched the spring training game yesterday, which you should be watching spring training anyway, you would see uh, Ben Gamble, while Don Kelly was talking to the booth yesterday, he wanted to extend uh, thanks to Ben Gamble, who allowed him to let the booth know that he was going to go see his wife, who was pregnant with their um, first child or second child. I can't remember if it was their first or their second in Jacksonville. And he cranked a home run. Oppo cranked the home run and immediately left afterwards. I thought it was one of the best moments that I had seen in a while. And another one as well um, that I thought was very interesting was it's just fun to see this stuff and all the players, they high fived them, everything. And then you saw some guys saying, go, 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 man. And it's just very awesome that the team was very considerate of this. Of course, I don't know why they wouldn't be, but it was just a uh, spring training. I think just offers so many different moments that you don't get during the MLB season. Um, you see players, they go sign autographs and talk to kids. And a lot of times they're just there to get ready for the season. They're just having fun. Um, you saw Tarek, uh, Tarek Black, or Brock, the uh, first base coach yesterday as well, being interviewed. And it was just fun to hear the first base lingo between him and a first base runner. That was always fun. Also, Neil Walker in the booth, man, phenomenal in the booth. I absolutely love what I've seen from Neil Walker in the booth this year. I think he's a really good guy already. Um, but Ben Gamble, man, congrats to you. I don't know if you ever would listen to this podcast, but congrats to Ben Gamble on his uh, wife and himself having a child. You know, it's always a beautiful thing, and I think that's going to be a home run he's never going to forget, man. I mean, you hit a home run like that, and you head out immediately afterwards to go see your wife uh, bring a newborn into this world. I think that's absolutely phenomenal. If you haven't gotten the chance to watch the uh, video of him hitting the home run, the Pirates posted it on their Twitter page with the commentary from Donnie Kelly and the booth. And again, honestly, he had some oppo power on that too, man. He got some oppo power on it. He had a really good hit with that. So I thought it was great. I thought that he did a phenomenal job there. And with that said, guys, we are going to wrap up today's episode. Thank you all for tuning in to the Locked on Pirates podcast and making me your first listen of the day every single day. And your second and third listen should be Locked on MLB Prospects. Host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available. You get your podcast. Same thing with Locked on MLB. Now, make your third listen Locked on MLB. Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him Sully, brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues past and present. It's also free and available where you find this podcast. Guys, make sure you go follow me on Twitter at MVP underscore Ethan. Also, follow this podcast on Twitter at Locked on Pirates. Make sure you guys also go subscribe to the YouTube. Turn on the notification bell, like, and comment. Go find this podcast on Spotify, Odyssey, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you find your podcast. And with that said, guys, I hope you have a phenomenal rest of your Wednesday. I will see you tomorrow and on the flip side.